Hello, welcome to the Sports on Pulse. I am Gary Al Smith. This weekend, we saw um, 20 teams in 10 games across the continent vying for five places at the Russia 2018 World Cup. One of them was the Black Stars. And among the big nations, so-called in Africa, the GFA and the Sports Ministry have given the continent cause to worry about how Ghana can make it to the World Cup. Per the percentages by one of the leading sports statistical firms called Opta, Ghana has an only, only a 35% chance of qualifying for the World Cup. At the center of it is the so-called GFA sports ministry feud. And we're asking, is it to blame for Ghana's poor start after getting just a 0-0 result in Tamale against Uganda? Here's Maxwell Konedu, assistant coach of the Black Stars, giving his pers perspective on this. We respect uh, every authority. Uh, we are just doing our job as coaches. And uh, what happens up there, I think uh, we have to leave it for management to discuss that. Uh, we don't have uh, control over what is happening beyond the pitch. We can control what happens on the pitch. But beyond that, I think uh, the FA and the ministry have to sit down and iron out their, their differences. But what you are saying, you are 100% right. In, the, in a way or two, it can affect the team psychologically and uh, we all hope and pray that it comes from end. If you needed confirmation that there's something going on between the two most important bodies when it comes to football in this country, Maxwell Konedu, the assistant coach of the Black Stars, has just given it to us. And he was speaking yesterday um, after Ghana played 1-1 with South Africa in Debada, the Moses Mabida Stadium. Next month, on the 13th, Ghana will be traveling to Egypt. A lot of people have said that it may be the match that determines if the Black Stars book a seat at the table of 32 teams in Russia in 2018. In studio with me is Kwek Waheng to do the discussion with me, and we are asking if this feud, true or imagined, is responsible for the 0-0 result in Tamale. Kweku, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Okay. The first reaction to that by many people I'm sure at home will be that if we had scored the goals that we created in Tamale, we wouldn't even be talking about this. No, it was just a postponed argument that people were going to have because it was really a matter of time. Had we dropped points in Egypt, this argument would have surfaced. So it's a very good that we had a draw in Uganda against Uganda so we can correct our mistakes and then go, go into Egypt, we can try and pick the win there. But just let's look at history. In 2014, in our World Cup, there, was, there were a bit of differences, players, um, administration, we all saw the outcome. Yeah. The team came together in 2015 and we almost won at, uh, the African Cup of Nations. So this should be a guideline for us. 2010, 2006, we were united, we were all together, we had a fantastic World Cup. In 2014, we were are, we are at different, uh, different local heads, everybody was fighting, and then we saw the difference. So for, if for nothing at all, we should know that the differences between the ministry and the FA is part of the reason why we are struggling currently on the pitch. Even on the pitch too, I don't think, Avram, honestly speaking, Avram Grant and Max Okunido are just doing enough because Black Stars currently just do not have a plan B. Yeah. On, on Friday against Uganda, the first half, they choked Mubarak Wakasu, and that was the end of Ghana. In Avram Grant's place since 2005 in the Cup of Nations, you can see that all our good football has come through the uh, Mubarak Wakasu, sp splitting passes, distributing balls here and there. And against Uganda, the first half, anytime you got the ball, there was somebody... Wh which we can see. Jordan, yes. are you getting an opportunity which on a normal day... He would have buried. And you can see on the bench the kind of reaction there, Bakweku. You are making a, a point about Wakaso being the focal point of all our attacks. And when he's choked, right. everything goes to pot. So it all comes down to the fact that we just do not have a plan B. And that's what Avram and Maxwell have to go back to the drawing board. There's not enough time, but they can re get something and then find a way for the Black Stars for it. Because a, a plan B is needed. Every team in the world has a plan B. Somebody was in a self for Barcelona who have an individual brilliance. With all due respect to our players, we do not have somebody who can create something out of nothing. Game changer. Game changer in this moment. So that's what we have to do with the best players. We need to have different alternatives, something else going through another player instead of Wakasu at the time. What's, what can we do with Wakasu is injured? Good point. But um, another point there, there's Mubarak Wakasu there, one of the free kicks. Um, he didn't take it, but you can see that when it was taken, it was, uh, they were unable to convert. But there it, he is, Wakasu. And it was one of about six free kicks we had on the day that were wasted in Tamale. Speaking of plan B, sometimes a lot of people feel that as journalists, we offer, uh, we are quick to offer, you know, what the problems are, but not to prefer solutions. Mm -hmm. What would you say should be the plan B, given the squad that we have 
at the moment. Honestly speaking, Ghana is oh, we, have, we dominate so much on the wings. We have Achu and Ichampong. Rakasi is always going down to them. Why don't you have a different alternative? Get uh, someone of a schema, someone who can hold the ball. We have this young player, Yaoyeboa. Someone who can, and it, we, after Steven Apia, we've not had someone who can honestly have the ball, control the ball, try and pick passes. So that's a different alternative for everyone to ponder over. We need someone who can handle the ball. That's how we say to Kwan number 10. Then we'll say what you train. That's what we need. We need that kind of yeah. alternative. It's just too one way for Ghana at the and, moment. And, and interestingly, Stephen Apia, like Kweku mentioned, Stephen Apia was on radio um, yesterday morning on one of the radio stations yesterday, and he actually said that when the next Black Stars game comes around, he would like to be there to be with the team in training to teach them one or two things. I mean, if it's gotten this bad, then that means we really have a problem. We really have a problem. It's, it's Where did all our number 10s go? It, they're around. <laughs> they're seriously around. They're seriously around. Avram just needs to open his eyes with the template. be one of them. Avram Grant, a lot of people around Africa say he's a very lucky man that he's been in charge of the team with everything that's gone on so far. Don't forget that Ghana last won a game, the Black Stars, um, against Mauritius on the 5th of June. It's been four games without a win. And check this out. Algeria had a coach who they um, gave a job just a couple of months ago. After two wins, a 6-0 win against Lesotho and 1-1 draw against Cameroon, Milovan Rahevac has been sacked. And that news, uh, bit of news happened just about 24 hours. And when it happened, I spoke to an Algerian journalist here on Joy News Prime. And I started by asking him why this very shocking decision was taken to sack the former Ghana boss. He had a meeting with the president of the FA this afternoon. And uh, they decided to go their separate ways. I think it was mutual. And it was only his second game in charge. His first match he won against Lesotho 6-0 at home. And his second match was against Cameroon, the first match of World Cup qualifiers, and they drew one to one. So after the second match, uh, Milo split, uh, went different ways with the Algerian Federation, okay. and it's looking like we're going to need someone else. Now, this is extraordinary, even by Algerian standards. Algeria is a very passionate football country, but sacking a coach after one competitive game has to be some record of sorts. Why did this happen? According to our information, uh, this is coming from the players. It's not coming from the Federation. And why, from your point of view as a neutral and as an expert, why you, do, you think it doesn't sit well with the players and the assistant coach? Well, I mean, Ryavec is known to be a pragmatic uh, coach. He's known to be someone who can, you know, squeeze uh, results, to, to not say defensive, to squeeze results, uh, to util utilize his players well, to be a, a good um, player manager. Uh, but first of all, his inability to speak French or Arabic So points well made. Milovan Rahevac, former Ghana coach, has been sacked. The key point is that player power was behind this decision. And Kweku joins me in the studio. We've seen player power play a huge role in several African countries like Cote d'Ivoire and some of the North African countries. To what extent can it be a problem? Because really, it's just one game they have played competitively. 
And when you watch the clip, certain things came out. Philosophy, man management, and then ability to relate to the place. And that's what football is about. Let's go back to 2010, Milovan Ryback in Ghana. The issue that people do not know is that a lot of people criticize the way Ghana played. Because in the last eight or ten years, his only coach has come to Ghana and had made Ghana play on the back foot. Ghana sit back and allow teams to attack them. And one thing about his Ghana team, he had Ajiman Bedou, Deda Ayu, Opoku Ajiman. These players were not stars. They did not have that ego. These were players who are now coming to the top stage. Yeah. So that's one difference that people have to note at the moment. Right back, this is the first big job he's got to, and he's got to manage egos. You know, it's time he, he found a nice way to deal with Lyle Kingston, found a nice way to deal with Silvio Mutari. Mutari was on the bench. Kingston did not make the trip to South Africa. So that's, that's where we are coming from. And then he's managing a Mares, a, a Premier League winner, Slimani, Bude Boos. You've got players with big egos, and this was a big test, and the players just couldn't, he just could not handle it. And that's, how, that's the outcome. He's got to go home. He's got to go home. Player power is a topic that, even at club level, is very, very divisive because people feel that the management should be the ones doing the job. But, you know, sometimes it's the players who bring the results. If they say they don't like you, you've got to go. Um, I've got to go now, not by player power. <laughs> my name is Gary Al Smith. We have more on my joyonline.com sports page in terms of content and in terms of all the headlines. On social media, join us on Twitter at joysportsgh. And on Facebook, Joy Sports. Catch you later.